Thanks very much. Yeah. Um, and thanks so much for everyone coming here, and thanks to Edward as well and for, for those great slides. Uh, I, I'm actually used to using PowerPoint slides myself, but I didn't have any today. So I'm just going to ask you to sort of have PowerPoint slides in your mind. Uh, so there's going to be three main slides. Uh, the first one is about the purpose, I think, of why we're here uh, and what we want to do with our parking infrastructure um, and, and our transport infrastructure. Uh, the second one is about the people who are going to be affected by the plans that we put forward. Uh, and I think the third main thing is actually how we want our plan uh, for parking to work out. Um, so I think we all know the reason why we're here is, is part of a historical uh, inability or uh, a difficulty of taking collective action over these issues. Now, now partly that's a, a structural problem between the county council and the city council and, and parking issues sort of falling somewhere and gaps between. Uh, but the thing that I want to see personally uh, as a Labour candidate and I think that the thing that we're going to be pushing for in the Labour Party is ultimately all of this has to be within the goal of trying to get to a zero carbon economy and trying to have, I think, a sustainable, successful uh, Cambridge. I mean, uh, we, we want to see Cambridge being a model city and parking, I think, is uh, uh, definitely a part of that. Uh, we also need to make sure that we're not just having a do-nothing approach. You know, so it's, it's not an option simply to do nothing and wait uh, and go on with consultations forever. And so that's why it's really good, and you can go online and see this, uh, Labour's got a seven point plan for the whole of the city, uh, and point four is specifically about parking. Um, and, uh, the, and the basic idea behind that is to open it up to uh, residents' decision making, and local decision making, as much as possible. Um, so I think that if you look at the people, so second main slide, if you look at the people who are affected by parking issues, uh, you know, I, I, I hear quite a lot knocking on doors, one of the big, uh, problems is uh, commuters who come in, who leave their cars all day, you know, that's what's clogging up the roads, that's what's uh, causing a lot of the congestion. Uh, and so that's important. I mean, we're at a school, if we want to re reduce congestion, it's going to be better for kids on the way to school if there's less traffic, it's going to be safer. It's also going to be better for pollution and noise. Uh, so all of these things, you know, we, we all know why uh, we want to deal with um, uh, parking. One of the things, of course, we've got to think about is the businesses in Newnham. So I live just at the end of Elsa's the Avenue, next door to the chemist. We've got the butcher uh, at the other side. What we absolutely don't want to do is see a scheme where customers uh, are deterred from coming to the businesses, but also people who work there. I mean, we, we don't want just to uh, have charges brought in, uh, meaning that it's going to cost more for them to get to work. Uh, and also, I think we've got to think very carefully about not make, making sure that a parking scheme isn't just a revenue-raising exercise. Uh, so I, I don't know if you read the Cambridge News, but today uh, we've got a story in the county cap about the county council, a two, two million record year uh, for parking fees. So, so uh, the county council at the moment, uh, it, there is a tendency, we, we know it's all true, for parking issues to be turned just into a revenue-making uh, uh, strategy, but, uh, but not something that is actually going to solve the problems of uh, parking congestion. That's what we want to avoid. We don't just want to punish commuters. We've got to make sure that the money that we raise is going back into park and ride so that we have an integrated uh, plan. Uh, so, so coming to the plan specifically, uh, I think that there's three main points that we've got to follow. First of all, whatever we do, I think that it ultimately has to be consensual. Uh, and so Edward talked about uh, some of the problems with existing plans and majority votes. Uh, I think the best way is to have uh, consultation. So that's what the, the Labour Party's seven point plan for the whole city is going to be doing. Um, and the second thing is that we can't have a one-size-fits-all approach to the whole city. Uh, so that's the idea that uh, Labour is, is pushing for to make sure that decision-making is delegated to local resident groups. Uh, so uh, as Edward has said, you know, if you've got one, one set of issues in one street around businesses, you have one plan there, uh, but you can do other things elsewhere. So within an overall framework, there's got to be flexibility. Um, and the third thing is that we've got to make sure that it's integrated into a holistic uh, transport um, system. So that's linking up uh, parking to the idea of park and rides uh, and making sure that everything is working together. Um, so uh, I think also it's important to, to say that, you know, uh, this um, to me is not really such a political issue. Uh, this to me is, is really a technical issue. It's, it's not so much sort of big party politics. It's often about competence and it's just about thinking through the options and the right strategies. And that's why it's so good that, you know, usually ideas come from uh, people who are in, in community groups who've been thinking about this for a long time. And so the more options that we have on the table, the better 
it will be. And so hopefully then we'll get smarter transport in Cambridge and a, and a better city deal. Um, so thanks very much for listening. And